profess Christ. We're going to take a moment to share with you about what Christ has done in their life, and then we'll baptize each one of them in turn. Okay, first, we're going to have Kanija Smith. It's cold. You got to own him. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hold this. I don't want you to touch it. And if you go long, I'm just going to say you're done. <laughs> All right. I'm up here to proclaim that I'm a believer in Christ. Getting to know Christ was a big challenge. Being a brand new Christian, I was immature, reckless, and did not fear God. Before I got saved, I struggled with the sins of this world as a slave. I would promise myself that I won't do it again, or that I won't steal, or lie constantly, but I ended up falling back into the same pattern of confuse, confusion and regret. Faith in Christ brought me hope, and fearing brought me out of the darkness and revealed to me that I am to ask God to deliver me from these situations. As I was brought closer to Christ, I began to realize that Christ has a plan for me, and that as I continue to believe and submit to him, I will be blessed. Christ gave me purpose in this meaningful, li meaningless life. He opened my eyes to my sin and brought me from a slave to a living witness of the gospel. God has put me through some tough moments. Um, but the more I began to look to him in these moments, the more I became blessed and hopeful that he has got it all under control and seeks to satisfy me. He's a loving father. And I also began to realize that he also disciplines out of love. God, because I have faith in Jesus Christ, my son. Amen. He not only delivered you from these sins, but the penalty. Amen. So have a seat. You want to be a follower of Christ. He's saved you from your sin. Now you're going to own him publicly. You want to follow Christ, can I just, no matter what? Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I didn't get all your hair wet. <laughs> So this is my testimony of how I came to know Christ. Um, I was raised in the church and would go to church every Sunday. Every week going to church was just something that we would do, to me at least. Growing up in the church, I witnessed many of my friends and family members accepting Christ into their lives and becoming Christians. As I matured, I came to the realization that accepting Christ was not just something someone would do, but a turning point in someone's life from being destined to hell to eternity with our Creator in heaven. When I was 10, I believed I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. But it was not the case. At that moment, I just submitted that God was uh, the Lord and Savior, uh, holy, perfect, just, and the one that could save all, all believers from their wretched sin. Although that is the first thing a believer must realize, that by itself would not save me from a life suffering in hell. A couple years passed with me unknowingly living a lie. During the next couple years, I heard the gospel message preached many times and in the invitation to come to Christ following the message. After a couple years of me falsely proclaiming I was a Christian, it hit me like a ton of bricks that I was not, <clears throat> not truly saved. When I was about 12, I had the longest night pondering how treacherous hell was and how glorious heaven was and how powerful God is. At that moment, I repented for my sin and confessed that Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Soon after my salvation, I, an intimate walk quickly came over me with many mornings in his word. At the time, I did not completely realize that after one was saved, they should be baptized, not for the sake of just doing so, but to pub publicize one's new salvation. It was made known to me after many more teachings and messages being taught to me. I thought this to be true for many years, and I thought this to be I, instant I instantly believed that I had to be perfect before I could be baptized. I thought this to be true for many years, and never attaining the goal of perfection, I was hopeless. 
I was not relying on God and his strength and forgot the key basis that you can do nothing apart from Christ, but trying to work myself to a high enough level of holiness to be baptized. A few months ago, it struck me that I was not able to become holy or justified on my own, but through Christ who dwells within me. Once I, w- once I became aware of this new knowledge, it immediate, I immediately wanted to be baptized, not because I earned my right to, but because, but because Christ paid my debt and died on the cross that was my own to pay. And now I'm here to proclaim that Christ has saved a wretched, self-centered sinner as I am. Amen. Amen. How, how kind of God to take you and show you, you know, that, that, that you didn't know him. You, you had come to a head knowledge of him. And he, he'd draw you to him, and then you saw the change immediately. He said this intimate walk ensued. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, uh, we're all waiting for that perfection, bro. It's, it's still coming, mm-hmm. but he's working on you. Amen? Why don't you have a seat? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you, <laughs> let's, you know, let's take a moment to just talk here. <laughs> for, um, uh, you've come to know Christ as your Savior, yes? yes? You believe that you're a follower of Him. Yes. You're going to follow Him no matter what. Yes. Then I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's okay. It's waterproof. Yeah, right. All right, brother. All right. Um, I come to profess my allegiance to Christ. Um, and before I knew Christ, I knew religion. I grew up in L.A. I was the youngest of six. My pops died young. And my mother, who's a great person, moral compass, was enthused when a couple of young ladies knocked at the door promising her hardworking, an instant family, a moral path for her children, and access to the only true God, Jehovah. I, wasn't, I was only a toddler, so I was raised a Jehovah's Witness. And there was three quotes that shaped my reality for about 30 years. One, the inspection of the slave in 1918, which meant that Jesus came and inspected the religion I was in. So I didn't know Christ. I knew he turned over everything to the religious leaders at the time. Another quote was, we needed to listen to men like we would listen to the voice of God. So I knew to be unquestionably loyal to leadership and never think or never think about, never think or talk about leaving the religion. And lastly, we were taught and indoctrinated with the thought that if we ever join another organization or leave the religion, there would be no salvation, nothing but the wicked world, and there would be no true joy. So this became my path. And when I was in my 20s, we started reading a book inside of the Jehovah's Witnesses' religion called The Greatest Man Who Ever Lived. And it was, we didn't do that much in depth about Christ, but that book really touched me. I learned a lot about a, a leader who kept with company with sinners, who overturned traditions, who, who had conflicted interests in relations to what men did. He forgave sins instantly, and I began to compare my religion to that. I knew something was wrong, but I was too scared to leave at the time. All my brothers and sisters are higher up in our our religion, so I just put my head down and felt it must be me and just worked as hard as I could. But it never worked out. So for years I would leave the religion, then I would join the world, I would chase money, chase women, I would just keep joining the world. And then I would come back because the world was empty, but then when I come back into the religion, I would feel empty there as well. So there was just absolutely no peace. I would, remember, I would remember Christ, and I would open my Bible, and I would read it, but I would be pissed off and angry that this, this person who's Christ didn't fulfill me internally. So I would leave again. By the time I was about 30, I was the leader in the organization. I was giving sermons, and I was a picture of acceptability. I did massive hours, street witnessing, but I was miserable, and I felt like I was in prison. One day, I finally had the courage to start doing the research of the religion I was in. And it was clear to me that at that point in time, it was false. 
I did some research, I got on planes, went and met others that was a part of the religion from the beginning, and I realized that the only thing they did was started a new religion, so they was offering me bondage again. But I would never go into a church because the church was evil and everybody in it was evil as well. I would tell my doubts to some of my friends, but no one had the courage to listen, or they would just say the same thing, you're in the truth, there's nothing out there, everything else is a lie. So I would start my campaign going back and forth. The worst thing about being, the worst thing that you can do as a Jehovah's Witness is to join another church. The worst thing you can do is get baptized because when you do that, you will be instantly excommunicated and you will no longer be able to talk to your friends and family. The only person that had the courage to listen and leave with me I eventually was my brother Dwayne, and we had to learn how to do life over again. No friends, no family, and recognizing that this decision would be the end of that. But I needed Christ, and I knew I needed forgiveness, mm -hmm. and I realized that Christ was always standing next to me, but he was never my personal savior because I didn't know I could go to him. I visited churches secretly, different ones, different ones, had difficult time connecting because of fear of being there, met some good people, but just didn't have the internal dexterity to form the relationship. I came to Cornerstone once back, and I heard something in the church, and I left thinking I would never come back. I came again, and I was introduced to Pat, and he helped me to appreciate that there's an opportunity with Christ the accountability that I have with Christ, the forgiveness of sin, the ability to wake up fresh and new and free was something I had never experienced before. I've always lived for myself, but I have children that look at me now. And the only thing that I know I can give them if something should ever happen to me is someone to turn to that would never give up on them. I will lose everything for this decision but I will gain everything for this decision as well. The freedom that I've always wanted and Christ is worth it. Amen. Well said. A man can't do that for you. Not even a good man. Only God can do that for you. Only God can free you from your sin. And so he came. And he became a man, and he took your place on the cross. And he died so that you wouldn't go to hell, believing a lie. That's mercy, and that's grace. You want to own Jesus Christ as God? Yes. Amen. That's right. You're owning him publicly. And what we talked about, you experience that perhaps more than others here. Being ostracized by family and friends but you own Christ, and he'll own you. That's right. Have a seat, bro. You watch me. Well, brother, because you own Jesus Christ as Lord and as God, you've accepted him by faith, and you want to follow him now, regardless. He's worthy. I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a joy. I guess I can get out of here. We're going to sing one last song. So why don't you stand, and we'll get situated. Have the band come back up.